So let's have a look at some special catches and some rules. Now there's a lot of A1s, B1s and stuff like that here. But basically, the normal case is if you have um, some function which has to be a lower degree than the denominator, so if the denominator is quadratic, the function on top has to be linear or lower, otherwise some simplification has to take place. And that is equal to or equivalent to some constant over one of the linear factors plus a constant over the second linear factor. And it could be a cubic, which means you might have more than two factors. You might also have double factors. Let's say you have some stuff here. Um, so you've got some stuff here. And then you've got an AX plus B squared, whatever that is. If you have a double factor, well, you still have your normal constant over each other linear factor, but then your double factor is represented as a constant over the linear component of the double factor and then a constant over the quadratic component, the actual double factor. Um, and irreducible quadratic, so these are ones that can't be factorized. So if we have f of x over something times an irreducible quadratic, then this is identical to, so I'll just pop these extra brackets in here. Uh, this is identical to all the other stuff like normal, but then we get a linear over that irreducible quadratic, and we deal with it that way. So there's some examples in your textbook, have a read through those, but here's some further examples from me. Example two, write the following as partial fractions. So um, I'm going to set these up. I'll do A over here, and we'll see how we go with our working. This one is that double um, quadratic. So I'm going to say that I know that 4x minus 5 over x plus 1 x minus 2 squared is identical to it's a over x plus 1 plus b over x minus 2, the linear component of the factor, plus c over x minus 2 squared. That's how I set this one up. Um, so it's always the constant over the linear first linear term and then I've got the b and the c over x minus 2 and x minus 2 squared and then I multiply through everything by x plus 1 x minus 2 squared um, to remove all those elements and I get this 4x minus 5 is equivalent to a x minus 2 squared plus B, x plus 1, x minus 2, there's one of them left, plus C, x plus 1. And then I just need to do some um, algebraic playing around with this. So first I get A, x squared minus 4x plus 4, plus B, x squared minus x minus 2 plus c x plus c expand that out I get a x squared minus 4a x plus 4a plus b x squared minus b x minus 2b plus c x plus c and now I've been together all my components so I get a plus b x squared minus, uh, well let's make it plus, and in here I get b, oh no that's minus, I get c minus 4a minus b x, and then um, plus 4a minus 2b plus c as a constant term, and based here on the fact that I've got 0x squared plus 4x minus 5, I can do that coefficient matching. So I do that in three different colors, and you can see that if they're identical to, I set up a plus b has to equal zero, leading to a equals negative b, and I get c minus 4a minus b has to equal four, um, and I've got minus b equals a, so this gives me c minus 4a plus a equals 4, so c minus 3a equals 4, which means that c is equal to 4 plus 3a, 
So this is equation one, this is equation two, which I've now used. And in equation three, I've got 4a minus 2b plus c is equal to negative five. And I can now use that with the fact that c equals four plus three a and negative b equals a, which means negative 2b equals 2a. I add those together at 9a equals negative 9, a equals negative 1, which means that b equals 1, and c equals 4 plus negative 3, which is 1, and that leads to this, um, 4x minus 5 over x plus 1, x minus 2 squared, is identical to negative 1 over x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 2 plus 1 over x minus 2 squared. So there's the rule of partial fractions and that's one special case where you have that double root. Um, and now I could obviously do an integral of that as well, which I will have to do in a minute. But let's also do part B. Um, so I might, to do part B, I might actually create a bit of extra space and do it down to the side. Um, in fact, I might do this hence first. It just makes sense to do that first, given we've just done that. The hence is to integrate this. So I'm going to cheat again and just take a copy of this. And um, copy, and I'll paste it down below. And then I will grab this hence just so we can see the match. The integral of that, which I'll just move a little bit to the side, um, between 10 and 5, 10 and 5 dx, is equivalent to the integral of this, between 10 and 5 dx. And this is equal to, square brackets, negative log x plus 1, plus log x minus 2 and then this thing here is like x minus 2 to the power of negative 2 so it's not actually a log rule at all I increase that it becomes um, plus x minus 2 to the power of negative 1 divided by negative 1 between 10 and 5 and I'm going to substitute in and simplify at the same time that's equal to negative log of 11 plus log of 8 so I'm putting 10 at the moment and then minus and then minus 1 because it's the power of negative 1 1 over 10 minus 2 is 8 and I subtract from that the substitute of 5 which is negative log 6 plus log um, of 3 and then minus and 5 minus 2 is 3 so minus 1 third and this is equal to um, I've got the fractions there I'm going to put the fractions together and I'm going to put the logs together so here I get log of 8 over 11 and then I'm subtracting from that log of 3 over 6 which actually equals a half and then I've got negative an eighth plus a third and obviously at this stage you probably put it in the calculator um, but negative log of 3 over 6 is like dividing by a half which gives you log of 16 over 11 I believe and then 1 eighth is 3 over 24 plus 8 over 24 is 5 over 24 plus 5 over 24 um, whatever that is, so I'll let you evaluate that. So there's our definite integral between 10 and 5 of that function. Now, uh, the second part here was b, and we wanted to do a partial fraction on that. So you might want to just take a break now and stop there, um, but I'm going to finish this question in this video, and then I'll cut the next video for the next example. So I want a partial fraction 4x minus 1 over x plus 1, and this is an irreducible quadratic question, 2x squared minus 3x plus 20. So I've written that. Now I'll zoom in. This is poorly written. 
with a bad function bar, but let's go forward. This is going to be equivalent to a over x plus 1, and just checking, is this an irreducible fraction? Can I see two things that, well, I'll do it over on the side here, um, two things that add to equal negative 3 and multiply to equal 40. Well, um, 40 is positive, so they're both negative or both um, positive, and to give me only negative 3, that's not going to work. So it is irreducible, and you should always do that check. Um, this is plus bx plus c over that irreducible quadratic, 2x squared minus 3x plus 20. And now we go through the same process again. So I'm going to say that 4x minus 1 is equal to, and I'm going to have a times by that irreducible quadratic. And this will probably end up a bit easier than the last question because things are mostly expanded already. bx plus c times by x plus 1. And now I just need to uh, work out that expansion. I get 2ax squared minus 3ax plus 20a plus bx squared um, plus I end up with bx and cx so b plus cx plus 1c and that gives me 2a plus b x squared plus b plus c minus 3a x plus 20a plus c is equivalent to this and therefore I get 2a plus b equals 0 because I've got 0x squared 4x minus 1 um, so I get b plus c minus 3a equals 4, that's my most complex one, but then I've also got 20a plus c is equal to negative 1. So this really gives me the opportunity to get b in terms of, ne of, in terms of a and c in terms of a and then determine my a function by substituting both of those into equation number 2. So I get negative, or let's do it the right order, 2a, negative 2a, plus negative 1 minus 20a, minus 3a, is equal to 4. Uh, what's that? So that's 20a, 23a, 25a, it's negative 25a equals 5, and a therefore equals negative 1 fifth. And if a equals negative 1 fifth, then b is equal to 2 fifths, negative 2 times negative 1 fifth. And c is equal to negative 1 minus 20 times negative a fifth. 20 times negative a fifth is, that's 4, so I get negative 1 plus 4, which equals 3. It's my c, b and a. And so in terms of partial fractions, I've got this thing here. I'm just going to cheat a little bit. That is equal to, or is equivalent to, a, so I'll put um, negative one fifth, and you can write this however you want, and then two fifths x plus three. And we don't really like fractions inside fractions, so I'd probably rearrange that to be something more like this. Negative one over five of those. And then this one here, I'd put a 5 down there and make that 2x plus 15. And there you have it. Um, that's a couple of extra cases of partial fractions. You see that they get a little bit out of hand, but the process is there. And it's very procedural, and everything I've done there is quite procedural. It's just a fairly intensive group of algebraic workings. So keep on practicing and ask the questions you need to ask. All the best.